Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make pet supplies for your stuffed animals. Depending on the size, they could be pets for your stuffed animals or a pretend pet for yourself. Now let's get started! Okay, so I first want to introduce some of the pets I'm going to be using. Of course, I have Cheddar and she could really be a pet for a stuffed animal because she's so small. And I also have this little Shiba dog that I think is named Boo. I'm not sure if he was based on a real dog, but I think he just became a popular character a while ago. And he came with this really cute hoodie, but since it is cold outside, I'll leave it on. Okay, I'm going to start with a really easy two-in-one collar and leash that can be for any stuffed animal. So all you need is a piece of ribbon that kind of matches your stuffed animal's size. And I'm going to first take the end and wrap it around two of my fingers like this, twice. And this shorter end should be away from you, and you want to keep this end as short as possible, but this might take a few tries to get exactly how you want it. And I'm going to first pull up the ribbon on the bottom to be over the top one, and then I'm going to pull the new bottom one over my two fingers. And this is what's called a slip knot, which I've done in all of my crochet videos. The only difference here is I'm really trying to get this little short end as short as possible. And that's just because I don't want it sticking out, but it's not really a big deal if it is. But pretty much you can pull on one side of the ribbon to make the loop bigger or smaller, and then that way it's easily adjustable to fit over your stuffed animal's head. So once I got it on, I can tighten it a little bit just so it's snug. And now pretty much the leash and collar is complete. And then with the other end of the ribbon, you can do the same thing to create an adjustable loop that can go on your stuffed animal's hand if you want. And by that stuffed animal, I mean the one that's going to be like the owner, so they could be taking their pet out for a walk. And now that I think about it, I don't think cats go on walks, but I know Cheddar has a lot of fans, so I wanted to include her. I'm going to make a name tag for her a little bit later, but next I'm going to make a more realistic collar for a slightly bigger stuffed animal. So this is Snuffles. I've had her for a very long time and would always treat her like my little pet pig. To make the collar, I'm going to cut out a long piece of felt, and if you want to do a no-sew version, you could just leave it like this, but pick a color that you want to be the collar. And I'm going to make sure this fits around her neck while overlapping a little in the back because I'm going to use Velcro to close it. And next, I'm taking a piece of fabric that I want to be the outside color. This is honestly about three times as wide as the felt piece, and I left extra at the ends. So I have the felt piece kind of centered but a little closer to one side, and I'm going to fold over the shorter side first. Then with the longer one, I'm going to do a smaller fold to give that a clean edge, and then fold that over. This is just so it looks super neat even on the back, but you could really fold it whatever way you want. Then I folded in that shorter end and then pinned it in place, and now I'm going to continue doing that till I get to the other side. Once I've finished, I'm going to use a straight stitch to sew really close to that fold without going over. And I used white thread for more definition, which made it a little riskier, but mine turned out pretty good. Now I'm going to do a line just like this on the other side, and I'm going to try to make it the same distance away as that other one, so it just looks even. Here's what it looks like when it's done, and now to have it close in the back, I'm going to be using some Velcro. I'm cutting off a little piece and putting one side on the good side of the collar, and then for the other side, I want to make sure it's on the bad side of the collar, or whatever opposite side to the first one. And to sew this on, I'm going to use a really tiny stitch to go around the perimeter of this rectangle. After that, this basic collar is done and ready to try on, so I'm going to try it on Snuffles, and it fits perfectly. The one thing it's missing, though, is a little name tag, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to make this out of some thin cardboard, also known as paperboard, and I'm going to first write out her name just to see how small I can get it. So her name is Snuffles, and it's pretty long, so I'm going to need a pretty big one. But I just kept writing it smaller and smaller since I didn't want it to be too big, and I thought it would be funny if I made it the shape of a bone, kind of like a dog collar, even though she's a pig. And I feel like it just works with her long name. But you can do whatever shape you want. Also, make sure to draw on a little notch at the top. That'll be where to put the hole. I had to redo this multiple times, mostly because I'd forget that little piece at the top. Next, I'm going to be painting this one with gold paint to give it a metal look, or you could also do silver. And while doing this, I also did Cheddar's name tag, which was just a circle that I painted silver. After letting these dry, I'm going to poke a little hole at the top so I can attach this to the collar. So I grabbed this foam block since I'd be able to push a needle through it, but you could use anything soft that you'd poke a needle through. 
Then I pressed a pretty big pin straight through the top and I think it's better if you go fast. And then I tried widening it a little bit. Then I can just write on her name using pen and I found that it would sometimes smear so you might want to do a top coat of like Mod Podge but I didn't have a problem for the gold one, just the silver. Now to attach these you could either use really thin wire or string. For snuffles I used the wire and tried curving it first. Then I poked it through the hole, cut it off, and attached it to the collar. This is kind of a makeshift jump ring, but if you have a bigger jump ring, that would also be good to use. I'll admit the wire was pretty tricky to work with, so for Cheddar's, which was smaller, I ended up just using some thread. So here is how hers turned out, and I thought I was going to introduce her little friend here, but I guess I did that later, so watch till the end of the toy section. Okay, so like I just revealed, the next section is toys. So I'm first going to make like a dog rope toy. So I just picked out three different colors of yarn. My white yarn was thicker than the others, but that's okay. And I cut out maybe two seven inch long strands of each and then grouped it together and then tied it all into a knot at each end. Then I trimmed the ends a little and that's pretty much it. That was perfect for my little dog Boo. And another version of this that I think I meant to do but forgot is to first braid the three types of yarn and then tie the knots at the end and then leave the ends open. So that's an extra detail you could do for a different look. Next, I'm gonna do a dog bone and I think this is just like a snack they have. I don't know if they eat the whole thing or just chew on it. I don't have any dogs. But for a little one, I'm taking a piece of pretty thin white craft foam and cutting a long skinny piece of it. It's maybe about a centimeter wide. And then I'm gonna tie a knot at one of the ends and it won't really form an actual knot. It'll kind of just be folded on itself, but that's perfect. And then you'll want to do another one of those a short distance away. And then once you have that, you can trim off the ends really short and kind of curved like what I'm doing here. And that's pretty much your bone. You can make a bigger version by just using thicker craft foam. And this is a little bit harder to tie, but the key is to have a really long piece to start with so you have enough room for the knots. But yeah, I'm gonna give this to my sister's stuffed animal, Pug Pug. And he's pretty realistic looking, so when we were younger, we'd pretend he was our actual dog. Okay, the last toy I'm going to make is for a cat, and I'm just going to make a little ball of yarn. So I'm not sure if this is something cats actually play with, but I feel like it's a cliche for a cat to be playing with yarn. So I'm just taking some yarn and kind of balling it up, and then once you have kind of a clump, you can start wrapping it all around in different directions so it forms a circle. And this is pretty tricky since it's so tiny but just try to get it to hold together the best that you can. Once you get it to the size you like, you can cut it off and it's done. Now it's time to introduce Cheddar to a little friend and this is their first time meeting, so let's see how it goes. I used this felting kit to make an adorable cat and thought maybe they could be Cheddar's pet cat or even like a sibling. So if you have any name suggestions, please comment them down below because I don't have one yet. In case they need to go on a walk too, I made another leash with some really thin ribbon. But yeah, so now Cheddar has a little friend and there are actually a lot of these felting kits with other kind of pets, so I might be making some more. Next, I'm gonna move on to making some food and water bowls. I'm first taking a toilet paper roll and cutting off a piece, whatever height you want the bowl to be. I think I ended up making mine a little bit shorter later. Next, I'm placing this on a piece of paperboard or cardboard and putting a bunch of liquid glue inside where the two meet. I used a really thick layer to make sure it would stick, but that just means the drying time will be longer. I put something pretty heavy on top to make sure it would stay down while it was drying. Once it's fully dry, I'm cutting off the extra really carefully around the bottom edge. And unfortunately, my camera cut out during this part, but all I did was paint it red or whatever color you want. And next, I'm going to write on my pet's name with a Sharpie. A paint pen would be good for this too. I somehow did a pretty good job just winging it, so I got lucky there. And then to give it a little more decoration, I did some paw prints off to the side. And now that I think about it, I probably should have done a hoof prints, since it's for a pig. <laughs> But that's it for the bowl, and now I'm gonna make this a food bowl. So to make the food, I'm gonna take that thick craft foam again and cut it into strips. And it was actually so thick, I had to cut it in half, like width-wise. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm trying to make little cubes or like pellets of food. 
I'm really only cutting enough to cover the top because I don't want to be doing this all day. So I'm just taking some crumpled up paper and fitting it inside there until it reaches close to the top. I honestly think I filled mine a little bit too much. So next time I'd go a little lower. But then I can add glue and cover the top with the foam pieces. If you don't have craft foam, you could always use little crumpled up pieces of brown paper. I wanted the pieces to kind of stick together, so I got my paintbrush in there, but then they just all stick to the paintbrush, so I don't have a great way of doing this. But maybe I should have just drizzled some more glue on top, but I was kind of in a rush and wanted it to dry faster. Okay, once this is dry, I'm going to cover this with some tan paint. And I forgot to mention, if you have tan craft foam, that would be ideal so you don't have to paint over it. Because it was a little hard getting in between all those squares, so there were still little tiny pieces of white showing at the end. While that was drying, I started prepping the water for the water bowl. And all I did was take some plastic from packaging and brush it with glue. I did kind of a swirly motion, but I realized I should have done this with Mod Podge because the glue was just a little bit too opaque. And while filming the intro, I realized I missed the perfect opportunity to have milk in this bowl because it was for the cat. So yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> so now I'm cutting this into a circle that'll fit my bowl. I made another one in blue. And here's what it looks like once I finally got it in. The swirl is barely noticeable, but at least there's something inside. I should have put some white paper over top of this and just made it milk though. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna decorate the outside of the bowl with a cat face. And I wasn't super happy with the way this turned out, but I mean, it wasn't that bad. I went for kind of a Pusheen look. Oh, I forgot to include Pusheen in this video. I think she would have made a good pet. Here are the finished food and water bowls. The paint isn't fully dry for this food, so it looks more like wet food right now. But I guess if you want it to be wet food, you could just add on some Mod Podge. And I forgot to mention, for a bigger stuffed animal, you could just use like a bigger roll of something, like a roll of duct tape and repeat the same thing. But yeah, that is it for this video. I know there's a bunch of other pet supplies I could make, so maybe I'll make a part two one day. But Valentine's Day is kind of coming up and I love Valentine's Day, so I want to do some themed videos for that. So make sure to comment if you have any ideas for that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, share it to any other stuffed animal lovers you know, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.